Hi everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video we are going to discuss about the basics of AWS Client VPN. Now at this stage we understand the benefits of VPN from corporate environments perspective on how it allows us to access the internal servers. So at this stage before we go ahead and understand about the basics on why client VPN are so useful it is important for us to understand the standard architecture that many of the organization uses to implement a VPN solution. Now one of the very common architecture that you will see is that VPN is installed in a EC2 instance that is part of a public subnet. For example, you have some servers in private subnets. So these are the internal servers is what you can refer to where the users will not be able to directly communicate to. So you need a VPN solution. Now there are a lot of VPN solutions that are available. So you install that VPN solution in the server which has the internet connectivity which is in the public subnet. So once you have the VPN installed in this EC2 instance in a public subnet, the client can authenticate to the VPN that is running in the public subnet and from here you can go ahead and connect to the internal servers. Now when we discuss about the softwares, one of the very popular software that is being used in many of the organization for VPN is the open VPN. Now let me quickly also show you. So you have a open VPN access server which is very popular. So in here what you do you install this specific access server on top of the EC2 instance and then you will be able to configure a lot of things related to users related to the groups related to VPN settings and so on and then user will connect to this specific open VPN access server through their credentials and from there they will be able to access the internal servers in your organization. Now when we discuss about the EC2 based VPN solution there are certain challenges that it comes with. One of the primary challenge is related to the high availability. For example, if you look into this specific architecture there is only one EC2 instance where a VPN is installed. Now what happens if this EC2 instance goes down due to any reason? In such case the entire VPN of your organization will go down and no one will be able to access the internal servers which is quite a big issue in production. Alright so whenever you are configuring VPN for production environment you have to take care of high availability as well. The second important area is patch management. It can be related to the VPN software or it can be related to the underlying operating system. New vulnerabilities are released every week. So you have to ensure that you check for the vulnerabilities regularly and you patch them regularly as well. The third primary challenge is upgrade of VPN software. So open VPN access server we were discussing. There can be new updates to that. There can be many new major versions that would be released. So the entire upgradation part also falls into your bucket if you are managing the EC2 based VPN for your organization. The fourth is performance optimization. If things are not working out, if VPN is slow, users will come to you. You have to look into why things are running slow. So the entire part of monitoring not only the entire operating system but also the VPN related connections is something that falls into your bucket and is quite challenging. And the fifth part is the entire VPN server configuration by itself. For example, whenever you go ahead and install the open VPN access server on the left hand side you see there are so many options that are available. So you have to be familiar with all of the options and how they can be used in your organization. You need to know about the tuning aspects of each of these so that you can use it optimally. Alright, so these are some of the challenges associated with the EC2 based VPN architecture. Now generally in organization it is not like there will be a separate team for VPN. You will have a common team for example it can be networking team, it can be DevOps team and so on. In the organization that I was working with our team which is the security team used to manage the VPN. We were only two people in the security team apart from our primary other task related to hardening, vulnerability management, patch management for the entire organization etc. VPN was you can consider it like a side business that we used to handle. 
Now, in order to overcome all of these challenges that we were discussing, AWS has introduced a service called as Client VPN. And the benefit here is that it is a fully managed remote access VPN solution. So now, instead of creating a EC2 instance, launching the open VPN access server, taking care of licenses, performance optimization, security, etc., all you'll do, you configure the client VPN in AWS, and AWS team will take care of everything for you. Now, before we go ahead and explore other areas related to client VPN, let's have a quick demo to see how exactly it looks like. Now, currently I'm logged into my AWS console and we are in the VPC dashboard. Now within here, if we look into the client VPN endpoints, at this stage, you see that we have one endpoint of KP Labs client VPN that is available. And if I'll open this up, you'll get various other details related to the protocols and other configurations that you can configure as part of the VPN that you have set up in AWS. Now, I also have one internal server over here, which represents the bottom part. So this internal server is in the private subnet. So what you generally do, you if you want to access this internal server, as we were discussing, you can either use a EC2 based VPN architecture where you install the open VPN server in the public EC2 instance, or you set up the client VPN endpoint, which takes care of everything for you. All right, so let's do one thing. Let's also go ahead and quickly connect to this VPN and we'll explore other features here. Now from my desktop, let's quickly open the open VPN utility. So this utility is what will allow me to connect to the client VPN in AWS. So you see it was quite quick and I'm connected here. Now if we look over here, the private IP is in the range of 10.0.0 and it is 34. And the server you see, it is the client VPN AP Southeast one dot Amazon AWS dot com. It is also showing us the public IP of the VPN. Now this specific IP of 10.0.0 came from here. So this is what I had added in the configuration of the client VPN endpoint. And this is the reason why this IP was assigned. Apart from that, if we look into the connections here, you see it is also showing me the connections that are currently active. So this second connection is currently active. There is also one more connection which is terminated, which we had used for the earlier demo. So from here, we can be sure that the open VPN tool that we had used is actually connecting to this specific client VPN endpoints. And now once you are connected to the client VPN, you will be able to access all of the instances directly through the private IP address. You no longer need the public IP here. So if I'll copy this and in the terminal, if I'll quickly do ping, you see things are working perfectly well. All right. So I hope with this at a high level overview, you understood what client VPN is all about. Now, along with that, AWS offers a lot of configuration that you can go ahead and set as part of the VPN. Now, similar to how we were seeing in the open VPN access server, on the left hand side, there are so many configuration that you can go ahead and set for your VPN. In a similar way, even for the client VPN, there are a lot of options that you can use to go ahead and customize the VPN based on your requirements. Great. So with this base set, let's go ahead and look into the benefits of AWS client VPN. First primary benefit is that this supports pay as you go pricing. So this is quite beneficial. Second one is that it is fully elastic. So it can automatically scale up or scale down based on the demand, which is very useful. And the third primary one is that the AWS client VPN, including the software client supports the open VPN protocol. Open VPN protocol is very popular and this support makes it quite easy for migrations to also happen. Great. So that's a very high level overview about the AWS client VPN. Now, one thing that I wanted to share before we conclude this video is that it is not necessary that since the client VPN feature is introduced, you must migrate your VPN to client VPN of AWS. AWS client VPN comes with its own cost. It can become expensive as well, primarily because of the features that it is offering. Now, a lot of organization, they'd like to customize the VPN according to their requirement in quite detail. If you're using the AWS client VPN, there are certain level of customizations that are available, but you will not be able to customize it fully based on your requirements. And this is the reason why it is not always suitable for all of the environments.
all right so if you have a small organization if you do not really know on how to create and manage your own vpn for example open vpn access server then you can make use of client vpn endpoints if you are a larger organization you require a lot of customization maybe open vpn access server can prove to be much more beneficial for you provided that you have the appropriate amount of time and resource to manage that great so before we conclude one more example that i wanted to share so in one of the organization that i was consulting with it was a startup they had around 200 to 300 employees and they did not have a vpn solution so the requirement was to set up vpn for the entire organization in the lowest cost as possible so they had some financial crunch and they did not really want to spend too much money on the managed vpn services so in such case what we did was we created a simple ec2 instance we added a open vpn an access server and it was up and running great so with this we'll conclude today's video